Happy Monday, friends. I thought we could start the day out with a little game. Remember how to play this? We've got the pretzels and the row of peas and the cheese and the cherries. And then we've got the columns of purple, yellow, orange, green, and blue. I hope you can see it okay and it's not too glary from the sunshine when it starts to pop out. Okay, close your eyes. Put your knee, or eyes in your lap, eyes in your lap. No peeking. I'm gonna pick two. Okay, are you ready? Look, which two are missing? Hmm, what colors do you see gone? What pictures? Look right here, we got the green column, so we know it's green. Which picture is it? Did you say cherries? You're right. Okay, what's the next one? We've got the pretzel row. What color is that pretzel going to be? Whoop. Did you say a yellow pretzel? Ding, 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 ding. Okay, next, close your eyes. Put your eyes in your lap. Eyes in your lap. I'm going to choose some more. Oh, okay. Which two are missing? Hmm. Which colors? Let's start over here. What color? Blue. What's the picture? Mice love it. Cheese. Ding, ding. What's over here? What picture? We should have some peas. What color are those peas gonna be? Did you say purple? You're right. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. Close your eyes. Eyes in your lap, eyes in your lap. I'm gonna choose three this time. Let's see. Let's do... And look. What's missing? I see one, two, three, four. Four missing pictures. Let's go over here. What color? Blue. What's the picture? Pretzel. Blue pretzel. Ding, ding, ding. What's the next one? What color? Green. What's the picture? Cheese. Ding, ding. Okay, let's go over here. We've got missing peas. What color are those peas gonna be? Yellow peas. Eat your peas, they're good for your knees. Last one, what color? Purple, and what is the picture? Do, 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 do. Did you say cherries? You're right, cool. I just thought we could start out with the game. Before we move into some calendar time, did you have a good weekend? Did you play outside? I worked in my garden this morning and actually yesterday too. We moved the playhouse and so now we're just gonna put our new porch on and put new flooring down and pull in some weeds, tug, got a little pedicure this morning. So it's been busy here at Tiny Acres. We're still missing you and also, you know what I saw today? I was getting out of the car and there was a little bird and it was sitting on top of the gator. And guess what it had in its mouth? Not a worm, something that they're gonna use to build this. He had a big piece of grass sticking out of his beak and he is in the process of making a nest. And what is gonna happen in that nest? There's going to be little birdies soon. They're gonna lay eggs. And I have a little song for you. And it's called Little Birdies. And it goes like this. Way up in the sky, the little birds fly. Way down in the nest, the little birds rest. With the wing on the left, 
then a wing on the right. The little birds sleep all through the night. Shh, shh, don't wake the birdies. The bright sun comes up, the dew falls away. birthday. Do you want to do it with me? Okay, stand up. Here we go. Way up in the sky, the little birds fly. Way down in the nest, the little birds rest. With the wing on the left and a wing on the right, the little birds sleep all through the night. Wake the birdies. The bright sun comes up, the dew falls away. Good morning, good morning, the little birds say. I love that one, that's one of my favorites. Okay, so moving into some calendar time. You be looking for those birdies. We need to stand and do the flag salute. So please stand. Put your right hand in the air, in the air. Put your right hand in the air, in the air. Put your right hand on your shoulder. Put your right hand on your phalanges. Put your right hand on your heart, on your heart. Thump, thump. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice. Okay, keep standing, because you're going to be counting like little leprechauns. Okay, we're going to count all the way until we get to Monday. I'm going to use some green today. Are you ready? Count with me, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty. What two numbers make 23? Two and a three. 23. Okay, next question. What comes next in the pattern? We got girl, boy, beginning of the rainbow, end of the rainbow, girl, boy, beginning of the rainbow, end of the rainbow, girl, boy, beginning of the rainbow, end of the rainbow thumbs up thumbs down end of the rainbow thumbs up we've got 23 end of the rainbow okay here we go today is monday march 23rd 2020 two zero two zero good job okay next we need to tally mark and we're going to count five fives and when you get to the 100 you're going to clap here we go five ten 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100, 101, 102, 103 days of school. How am I going to rank 103? Like this. We have 103. 
Not 1003. I'm going to try my best, Raider. One, zero, three. Is that right? What's wrong? Is my one okay? Is my zero okay? What about my three? Is it facing the right way? Ah! No, it's not. I gotta flip it around. That looks like an E. Let's turn it around. One hundred and three. Days of school. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather out today? Go look out the window. Tell me preschoolers, what's the weather? What's the weather out today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy? Is there snow? Tell me preschoolers, what's the weather? What's the weather? Do you know? What is it? At your house. My house is cloudy and windy. Is it raining at your house or is it cloudy and windy or sunny and windy? You tell me. I'm gonna put cloudy up here. Cloudy day at the farm. It's catching up a little bit, just by one. We've got one, two, three cloudy days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sunny days. So we're still ahead. We're okay. All right, days of the week. Let's do dinosaur voices. Get your dinosaur voices. Days of the week, here we go. Days of the week, rah, rah. Days of the week, rah, rah. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, rah, rah. There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday. And then there's Saturday. Days of the week, rah, rah. Days of the week, rah, rah. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, rah, rah. First question, what is today? It's supposed to be the first day of the school week. However, we're having school at home, but we have Monday. Ding, ding. So if today was Monday, what was yesterday? Sunday, Sunday, Monday, what will tomorrow be? Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Good job. Okay, do you remember the clock? Remember we talked about the clock a little bit? If you were a couple of days. Okay, we have the minute hand right here and we have the hour hand and that's the small hand and we're gonna say the small hand first, then the big hand. So if we have this, it's pointing to what number is this? It is a six. Six, and if the big hand is right up here at the 12, remember we say o'clock. Okay, that's the beginning of the hour, starting at the top. So we have six o'clock. Now if I moved this to here, we say three o'clock. Let's move this to this number. What number is that? Five, five o'clock. I'm gonna try to trick you. What's this one? 10 o'clock. Uh oh, what about this one? Ah! Where did the hour hand go? It's hanging. But it's still pointing to a number. What number is it pointing to? 12. So this would be 12 o'clock. One more for good measure. Let's do this one down here. We have 8 o'clock. Nice, nice. We're going to practice the 30s tomorrow. Okay, next on the agenda, we've got something new. Okay, tell me what all of these things have in common. Birds, 
humans, dogs, horses, roses, grass, ferns, corn. Do you know what all of those have in common? They are all alive. Do you know what a living thing, what a living thing is? It's all of those. Anything that is living, you need to be able to breathe air. You need to have food and you have to have water. Living things need all of those things. Do we need air to breathe? <sighs> yes, we need air. Do we have to eat? Yes, especially snack time, right? That's your favorite. Then, do we need water? Yes, we have to stay hydrated. We would get sick if we did not have it. So, living things can be animals, people, but also plants. Do plants need air? Yes, they need air. Do plants need food? Yes. Do they eat bananas? No. But like when we talked about fertilizer and how the Native American Indians planted dead fish with the corn, that, help, that acts as food for the plants. Also, do plants need water? Oh yes. Also, they need sunshine to grow as well. But we need sun too, otherwise we'd go crazy. So, living things. And I have a little chant for you about living things. Oh, would this umbrella be a living thing? Does it need air? No. Does it need food? Do I have to feed my umbrella? No. Does it need water? Well, it likes to have water because that's its job is to repel the water from people's heads but it doesn't need water to live because it's, it's not alive. What about um, your couch? Is your couch alive? Are you sitting on your couch right now? Is your dining room table alive? No. Is your rug alive? Is your dog alive? Are your chairs alive? No. Okay, so the chant goes like this. Living things like you and me need some things to grow, you see. Animals all move around. Plants all have to stay in the ground. All need water, food, and air. So this world we have to share. Living animals, living plants, living all around us. Hooray! Do it with me. We're gonna be doing this all week. Living things like you and me need some things to grow, you see. Animals all move around. Plants all have to stay in the ground. All need water, food, and air. So this world we have to share. Living animals, living plants, living all around us. Hooray! Hooray for living things. We are living things. I have a story about two living things. I don't know if you've ever seen this story. It's called Billy Button Boy. And it's one of my favorites. It makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> okay. This story is about a little boy who loves to get dirty. And it's okay to play in the dirt, right? Right. But you have to clean yourselves up after you play and get all dirty, right? You go take a bath. Well, this boy, he didn't clean himself very good. And watch what happens. Okay. We've got the spine, front cover, back cover. It's a well-used book. It's kind of beat up a little bit. We have Belly Button Boy. That is called the title. We've got Peter Maloney 
and Felicia. Oh my goodness, Zacascos. It's a hard name to pronounce. The book has been read so many times, it's kind of falling apart. Okay, here we go. Billy loved digging. The deeper, the better. And some of that dirt got under his sweater. At the beach, Billy buried himself in the sand, and even his sister would lend him a hand. Look, he's burying himself at the beach. When people told Billy, you're covered in dirt, Billy just answered, well, dirt doesn't hurt. So soon, Billy's navel, which is his belly button, was filled like a cup with all kinds of things that boys will dig up. Do you see how it's humped up right there? And under that dirt, that muck, grime, and grout, the tiniest seed had started to sprout. Look at all the layers of dirt he's got in here. Sand, lint, soot, grime, hoop, crud, mud, crumbs, gravel. Here's the seed. Right there. It started to sprout. It grew through the night. And then in the morning, it woke Billy up without any warning. A little bush stood, and Billy just gasped. <gasps> this isn't good. Oh, no. This was something he just couldn't share. He knew his sister would tease him and stare. And as for his friends, they'd mock him and jeer. All the things they would say, he would rather not hear. So though it was warm, Billy put on long sleeves. He had to wear clothes that would hide all of the leaves. He caught the school bus and kept to himself and then hid in the library behind a bookshelf. Look. He's sweating. He's got water dripping from him. He's got long sleeves and it's summertime. He leafed through a book on what made things grow, but the book didn't tell him what he needed to know. Like, how in the world had this happened to him? To wake up with one morning and to have a new limb? room and locked in a stall. He saw that his plant was now several feet tall. He raced past the gym and straight to the nurse. He had to go home before he got worse. The nurse sent him home where up in his room he looked in the mirror and cried, I'm in bloom. He knew it was time for him to reveal the truth he had tried so hard to conceal. He's gonna go tell his mom. His sister just screamed, oh, it's all that I need. What can I say? My brother's a weed? His father turned white, perfectly pallid. He said to his son, you look like a salad. Although the problem clearly had shocked her, his mother just said, let's go see the doctor. What do you think the doctor's gonna do? Think he's gonna trim it? Leave it? 
Doc Dudley had seen him through fevers and flus, but Billy's new problem was medical news. Your case is a matter beyond this physician. I think a landscaper should treat your condition. So could the doctor help him? No. Do you know what a landscaper is? It's a professional that comes in and takes care of the yard and trims all the bushes. Let's all go and hear what the gardener will say. He sees things like this in his field every day. The gardener was kind. Wisdom shone from his eyes. He looked Billy over and showed no surprise. What's the gardener gonna do? The thing that you've got here, green, leafy, and fruited, could best be removed if it was quickly uprooted. And he gave a big tug and then uttered, I've got it. And now that I've got it, I think we should pot it. They're gonna plant it in the pot. Popped it right out. He looked down at Billy and said, with your pardon, a boy's belly button should not be a garden. You've got a great gift, son, for growing things green. But your navel is a pl one place you've got to keep clean. So, Billy now washes himself head to toe especially in places where dirt likes to go. He doesn't want this to happen again, though the gardener did tell him. Dirt is our friend. Because without dirt, could you grow things? No, you can't. They've got to sink their roots into something. So dirt's important, but does dirt belong in your belly button? No. So you wash your belly button when you are playing outside. because so We don't want you growing a plant. Is that a real story? No, that's fiction. It's fake. I mean, if it's a real story, you'd probably have real pictures and real information. But that was just a fun story because plants can't grow out of your belly button for real. But you do need to keep your belly button clean along with your whole body. So when your parents tell you to take your bath, you say, okay, mom, okay, dad, got it. I hope you're all being good for your moms and dads. I miss you so much. I will check in with you tomorrow with some more fun springtime living, non-living activities. And yeah, go play outside. We miss you. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.